So a couple of months ago, I heard this term, uh, which is a kind of a, well, at least in my world anyway, it's, it's a fairly new term, uh, of these people on Instagram who are known as influencers. So they're people who just have opinions and uh, express their opinions, and they may be maybe kind of fashion gurus, or there may be uh, young people in their early 20s who are just opinionated about politics and who people should and shouldn't be voting for and why. Um, generally, people with very, very symmetrically, symmetrically trimmed eyebrows and uh, take a lot of, obviously, time, uh, in, in, put a lot of time in, into their appearance and all that kind of thing, and then on Instagram regularly post their opinions, okay? And I guess, the, I'm not sure, if, I don't know who invented the term, but uh, I'm not sure if you can consider it a, a career, <laughs> but they're, they're, considered, they're called influencers, right? It's an interesting thing. I guess back in the day, um, it would have been maybe political commentators or journalists, you know, but like who would be kind of the, the, the influencers of, of yesteryear. Uh, but because they're kind of professionals and would generally know a fair bit, at least, maybe not without bias, but at least they'd know, they'd know a fair bit about their field and they would write about it, people would read about it, and that then might, might generally influence public opinion. But it's just interesting that, that today you can be considered an influencer without any real expertise at all. You just have an opinion, but you're just very forceful, very convinced about it, and you have really good eyebrows, so it makes you very convincing makes it very credible. Uh, it's just very interesting like how, how, how I guess, in, in our post-truth society, when truth isn't so important anymore, it doesn't really matter that you have science or research to back up what you say. What's important is just that you say it with conviction, which, of course, is dangerous, because our faith is always based, based uh, on, also on reason, divine revelation and reason, faith and reason, together. It's not just blind faith where... Uh, we read something in the Bible and take it all out of context and then just go off and do it. No, there's, there's, there's reason as well behind it, faith and reason. It's what keeps us balanced, it's what keeps us uh, kind of safe, if you will. Because uh, reason on its own will never lead you to divine revelation. God reveals himself because he has to, because divine revelation goes beyond reason. But then you also need reason to stop us believing in black cats walking under ladders with a broken mirror on their back being bad luck. You know, I mean really makes no difference at all. But this kind of, you know, it's, it's to stop us falling into superstition. We, we, we need reason. Okay, good. So, uh, the Lord tells us today that we are called. The Lord, Jesus says to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. Okay, that's biblical terminology for y'all are influencers, right? You're supposed to be influencers. Right? You're supposed to be uh, the light of the world, the salt of the earth. So salt, you don't need much salt. There are some people maybe who like a little more than others, but generally speaking, a pinch is good for a plate of food. Okay, You don't need very much, but it completely brings out the taste uh, of the food. And so the salt of the earth, it's not, like, <clears throat> it's not like we have to do anything completely radical. It's not like I have to walk barefoot from here to Jerusalem and back with nothing but a staff uh, in order to, be, to make a difference, to make an influence. No. You just live your life with the Lord. You have your, your, your day, your, your, you have your work, but you also have your prayer. And then the, the moral stance that we have, the way we live, the way we stand for <clears throat> what the church teaches, the way we dress, the way we drink, the way we socialize, all of these things will be affected by our faith. But on the grand scheme of things, from the outside, <clears throat> if you and a, a non-Catholic are standing side by side, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Because, as I say, it's not like we have to wear veils or shawls or anything radical. But yet, the changes that are made are crucial. Okay? Like, they, they may seem small, but it's like the mustard seed or these kind of things. They seem small, or the, the, the yeast, right? It's a small amount of yeast in, in, in your dough. But these things that seem small make all the difference. Okay, <clears throat> if you have, ever have a steak without salt, it's grand. Steak with just a pinch of Himalayan salt, different thing altogether. Okay, so these little, this, this little, this apparently little thing, our faith, it changes everything. It actually changes everything. And what a gift, what an absolute gift. 
And then, because this changes everything, people see us. I mean, we, we see in the community here, like if, some, if one of us is having a bad day, everyone is going to know about it because we're a tight-knit community. We, you can't really hide things, okay? And even if, they're, even if they're, they do manage to kind of put on a kind of a smile, you will know, you will know when it's not real, okay? So, because we know each other, same, same in the family. So we, we, we affect each other. Also, like the, the, the virtue of one person can have an effect on everyone as well. When you see someone who's so helpful, and so serving, and prayerful, and, and pure, and all of that, 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 that helps everyone else as well. People say, Jeannie, look, they, they, they pray well. Maybe I should up my game. Or you see someone who's like always first with a hand up and has any job to be done, and maybe you think, maybe I should volunteer too, you know? So like, we, we affect each other positively and negatively. The Lord here is asking us to affect each other positively, to give our life taste, you know, salt. Uh, it's so interesting that the way, our, the way the ideal life is presented to us today, it's presented as having so much taste, right? It's, it's presented as having so much fun and so much pleasure. And isn't it so interesting, though, that those who engage in that lifestyle eventually find that their, their life is it's tasteless, it's, uh, it's bland. I, I've, I've been doing all these things that the world says will make you happy, so I'm on my fifth wife now. She's 15 years my junior. Uh, I'm 75. I have loads of money, but I think she definitely married me for my looks. <laughs> all right? And, uh, and all of that. And like, you're doing all these things that the world says will make you happy, and somehow, though, it's just... It's just never really enough. It's just, ne just unsatisfying. So I need a younger wife and a bigger house and another car and a bigger pool and hair implants. And then I try all of that and, s and still nothing. So I'm doing all of these things and, I'm, I, and I have the Botox and the, everything done. All right, and still nothing. All right, so it's, it's just interesting, like, you, know, you squeeze all of these kind of apparent things that will, will make, us, uh, make us happy, but ultimately, if we're missing the key ingredient, like the salt, the, 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 something which gives our life real taste, it's just, it just means nothing. Everything else just means nothing, ultimately. It might be, a, it might be kind of a thrill in, in, in the moment, and then, and then nothing. So uh, ours, ours is kind of like the, we play for the long game, right? There's no point, you, you're, you're not going to win any, any marathon in the first kilometer, you know? It, ours is, we, we play for the, for, for, for the long game. Our, our strategy is, is, is a, a, a long one. We're kind of, kind of the slow and steady. We're trying to be consistent in our faith because consistency beats intensity every time. Consistency beats intensity every time. If you do one week of really solid prayer in a year, you go off to Medjugorje or Fatima or Lourdes and do so much prayer for one week, that's good, it's good. But unless you carry it on at home, that intense week of prayer won't actually, it'll, it'll be good for a couple of weeks afterwards and then you'll find you're back, back to square one. So consistency beats intensity every time. Praying every day is much more important than having a really good week of prayer once a year. And then we'll find that our, our life has taste. Because now it means that in your modest car, your modest home, your relatively modest family, you can actually just go out and sit in your modest back lawn and look at your modest tree and just actually enjoy it all. And not be thinking, bless, the bank owns that, the bank owns that, I haven't, how will I cover, how will I pay for that? You, know, you, actually, you can actually just enjoy life. You can actually go for, for a walk on Port Marnock Strand and just look around and say, my goodness, Lord, this place is beautiful. Thank you that I can live here and walk here. and Thank you that I can walk at all. <laughs> and and everything, everything takes on a whole new taste. And then when you meet people, people say, look, you, all this corona talk, you seem, you, seem, you seem much more at peace. You say, well, look, if the good Lord wants me, he'll take me. And if not, I'll stay motoring on. You know, I have, I have my faith. I keep praying every day. I leave it all in his hands. You didn't aim to write a book or preach to everyone. Someone asked you and you told them what the cause of your, your joy, your hope was. That's it. That's been the salt of the earth. And then people see us at mass or they see us pray or whatever it may be. 
So we're not like we're not setting out deliberately to kind of change the world, but our actions do change the world because our actions affect other people. And even if you think of family trees, sometimes a, a, a family. It's maybe not so much the case in, in, in Ireland. In America, um, because there would have been a, lot, a, lot, a much larger Protestant uh, population there, they can kind of trace their Catholic faith back to great-grand-uncle or great-grandfather X who converted back in 1820. You know, and, and they can trace then the, the, the Catholicity of the family down from that. You know, so one person who, who changed, converted, and and that affects the whole family for four generations. Even some of our young people here like who are greatly affected, positively affected, influenced by their grandparents' faith, their grandparents' prayer. So we were called to be the, the salt of the earth, so to give, to give our, our lives and the lives of those around us taste, and then to give it direction, light. And light, light has a lot of, con- lot of consequences. Um, Light helps us to see the truth. Helps us to see if, you're, if you've got a stain or a wrinkle. You won't notice it in the dark. In the light you will. So just being, a be- again, we're not actually forcing anything anywhere. But just standing for the truth holds the bar up then for, for everyone else. Again, I'm not rubbing anything in people's faces, but just the fact that we would state what God has given us as truth, that holds the bar. It's, it's, it's the light. Then for other souls, it, this now gives direction. Now I can choose not to follow that direction, but the direction has been given. And in all of this, you see, in all of this, the, the, the last line of, of our gospel, in the same way your light must shine in the sight of men, so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. So us, when, when we, when, for us, when we live as the light of the world or the salt of the earth, it's not for our glory. It's not for us. It's not so people will think we're holy or it's not that we want to be influencers. We want to serve God. We want him to get all the glory. So if what we do is seen, so be it. If what we do remains unseen, so be it. So if our prayer life, you know, if in the Adoration Chapel or at home, no one's going to see it. But there's that beautiful line from Scripture. What you've said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. What you've whispered in the ear, in the inner rooms, will be proclaimed from the rooftops. All that we do in secret will eventually be revealed. God sees it. So our influencing, some of it may be on social media, some of it may not. But the core thing is that that there's a living faith in here, a living unity with Jesus Christ, that I draw everything from him. So then when my life is, is given taste, it's given it by him. If I can positively influence those around me, it's all his work. If I can be a beacon of light to someone, it's all for the greater glory of God. It's all him. And so we thank the Lord for, for this privilege to be able to walk at his side and to work with him, to be his hands and his feet, to be an extension of his light, to be able to, to give taste to, to people's lives through the grace that he has given us. And may we always be faithful to it, even if it's misunderstood. Amen. <laughs>